Hello birders and welcome. Today we're going to be going over your expectations associated with the introduction and research plan. Now I want you to keep in the back of your mind two key factors about this assignment. One, it's like the bigger beast assignment associated with the 2.6 demonstration of understanding, which kind of got your feet wet. This is going to be the actual finalized assignment. Um, so make sure that you take the time to review any of the feedback, the rubric expectations, um, so that you don't make those mistakes on this assignment. Because this is the first big major assignment associated with the biodiversity project, which means it also follows the biodiversity um, project grading rubric. So please keep that in the back of your mind as you're getting, uh, as you're working through the assignment. The second piece that I want you to, uh, to be mindful of is if you look in the video description, you will see some key timestamps to kind of help you navigate the video. So feel free to use those as you're trying to review a few key instructions or checking directions um, during each of the sections that you might need to look forward to. That also includes if you need to reference the 2.6 videos, make sure to check those out too um, for further details because I won't explain all of them in here. So let's get started talking about the actual project. So I'm gonna give you four days to work on this assignment, four class days. And now of course remember this is an agenda. So you might not follow the agenda, you know, that's okay. My expectation is day one, you're focusing on analyzing your study locations. Day two, you're gonna be looking at study design and research. Day three, procedure and review. Day four, finishing everything up. Now, of course, it might take you a little bit longer to do one or do the other, that's okay. You should have a pretty much better understanding of time associated with each section, well, a little bit, compared to the 2.6 demonstration of understanding. So definitely use that as your like template as you move through it. Um, but do remember that you are working on this as a group, so this is one assignment for your group, um, not one per individual group. So you'll be working, so ensure that you're being an active, um, engaging team member, and you're contributing equally um, so that the assignment goes much more smoothly. Now the first section is analyzing your study sites. Now I'm not going to really touch on a whole lot of these details because most of these details are identical to what we were seeing in the 2.6 demonstration of understanding. Um, I do want to point out a few key pieces um, just to make sure. So instead of doing one site like we did in the previous, you're going to be doing three sites or two or three sites, depending on the size of your group. If you're two people, uh, you should have two transects um, that you're monitoring. If there are three people, you should be monitoring three transects. So be mindful that you're gonna be taking um, study site data from each of those sites. So if your transects in Bull Creek, then, or um, yeah, well, on Bull Creek or the Bull Creek Greenbelt, um, you're gonna be taking data associated with, your study site is gonna be that Greenbelt area. Um, so remember that as you're collecting that. The second piece that a lot of times happens here, since there's a lot of locations, so two or three, make sure that you're writing it very cohesively. So you're trying to create dialogue that is much more easy to read and not necessarily a list of facts and figures. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind. Of course, you can create a list of them and kind of bring it together and form it together towards the end. That's totally fine. Um, but just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, because it's much easier to read and it looks much more professional um, the more cohesive the document looks and feels. Another few key pieces is don't forget that recording to the hundredths place um, on measurements, that's a common mistake I see. The second thing is topography is normally recorded in feet whenever you're looking at it, so make sure to convert that to meters for the document, all metric measurements. Um, the other piece that we normally see is don't forget metric distances. So remember if I'm saying something is close or right beside um, or right across the street, uh, that's not, that perspective can be a little different for everybody. So make sure to include a metric distance for context just because that helps to ensure that I know how far your close is um, whenever you're providing distances. Um, but that's a little bit about analyzing study sites. If you need more details, feel free, watch the 2.6 demonstration of understanding. Um, and just know that it's the same, it's just now for multiple locations. The next piece is your study design and research. Now this will change. So in the original assignment, we asked you to compare your study site 
to Walnut Creek Metropolitan Park. And we wanted you to kind of think about, okay, what could I study? What variables make sense? And this is to get you thinking about good study design. Um, and we went through all the examples. We played a little game where you looked at different ones, which were right or which were wrong or which is better. Uh, definitely take the time to review those because that will help you in designing your study. Now, what one major, I feel like, confusion that I see is remember that you're comparing these three areas. So I might have a transect in Walnut Creek. I might have a transect in Mayfield Park. I might compare, a, birds have a little more flexibility because you're looking at an individual transect, right? Because you're walking a line within a park. So if you want to compare distance to water because all your transects are different distances from whatever water source is available in the park, go for it. That's a great study design. Maybe you want to look at topography because each of your transects are at different topography. Awesome. Maybe it's not that your transects are a different topography, but the average topo um, elevation in, in the parks is drastically different. That's also okay too um, if you want to think about it as the population at the park or if you want to think about um, comparing the population near your transect. Um, so whichever perspective you use, that's fine. Just make sure that it makes sense for what you choose in terms of the study design. Um, and then you're going to write a purpose associated with that, just a statement saying what you're looking at. Don't forget, if you have two, more than one variable uh, changing, that you do include that in the purpose so that it doesn't look like you're trying to hide that information. Uh, and in your hypothesis, this is the one where students also I'll get confused. You need to reference some rationale. So, um, for example, birds. I might say... Um, let's see. Oh, an example that I've heard before. Uh, I might say, I hypothesize that at low elevation, the population uh, or the abundance of cardinals, northern cardinals, will be less because there is statistically higher number of other birds at lower elevations, which increases um, food competitiveness, which is why they may or may not be there. Um, something, in, it can be, the rationale can be anything. But a good use of information would be relating it to your background information. So when you're doing your research, if you find out that, I don't know, they're more highly competitive for blank, they feed more by the water, they prefer this type of tree, they prefer whatever, um, that information is key to help you predict your hypothesis. Because it would make you seem very unprofessional and uneducated if your hypothesis is contradicting um, what the study is saying. Now, of course, you could be challenging what the studies are saying, and that's fine. Um, but ensure that you do have some rationale of why <laughs> you're challenging it, um, because we want to make sure that you're providing something that is sound in terms of the hypothesis. So it's not just a guess, but an educated guess. Um, again, you're going to provide that design of study. Don't forget um, birds a little different. Make sure that you include an image of the parks, so where they're all located in Austin. That's explained in the mapping. Also include, though, a, another image of each transect, of the actual path that you're walking, um, because we're going to need to know that as well. So two, you'll have two things that you need to ensure that you have. Then, of course, your background information, which I referenced as part of the hypothesis, you will need three scholarly sources. Scholarly, as I'm grading your scientific literature, remember scholarly means that it is a peer-reviewed research study. It's not an article that I'm reading on blogs.com. It's not an article that I'm reading on necessarily like Scientific American and such like that, because sometimes they are peer-reviewed articles, sometimes they're opinion articles. So make sure that you pay attention um, because your sources should be associated with um, peer-reviewed scientific study. Now, <laughs> a lot of times students automatically look for specifics. So if I'm studying um, northern cardinals and elevation, I'm going to go into my little Google and I'm going to Google northern cardinals and elevation. Okay, there might not be studies on that. There might not be studies here in Austin. There might not be studies with that specific um, bird type or anything like that. Remember that your studies can be broader. So they might be a different type of bird. They might be in a different location in the world. 
They might be drastic changes in elevation. Um, it might be on the opposite. So maybe I'm studying elevation, but I'm going to include a, uh, a study about water availability because I'm going to argue that that's not going to impact it. Um, I'm going to argue that my variable is going to impact it um, if I have compounding variables or such. Um, so keep in mind that what research studies you use don't necessarily have to be directly related. They can also be indirectly related um, as long as the rationale is sound. Now I'm sure that when you get these research studies, I would write them, again, cohesive. Cohesive discussion. Um, that in, you're ensuring that you're presenting the study. You don't have to put the title of it in the paragraph. You can just put a study done by blank and blank, who are the authors. Um, talk a little bit about their methods. Talk a little bit about their results and ensure that that's connecting to your study. That's the main piece. Why does this stu uh, research study actually relate to what I'm discussing? So please make sure it doesn't need to be six paragraph summary of the eight page study. What it needs to be is concise, but meaningful language that's connecting those two pieces, your paper plus the study article. So keep that in mind as you're working through the background research. I would highly recommend don't assign one student to do all background research. That normally ends up in a very bad situation. Um, so I would just advise against that. Now, procedure and review. There are extra sections that are a part of this one that are not a part of the demonstration of understanding. Um, the first one being a natural history. So since you're a birders, you're studying a particular organism and we need to know about that organism. So ensure that you're providing details, um, a lot of details about your organism, behavior, habitat, where they are, where they live, what they eat. Um, and there's a lot of details of what is expected, what should be included in that here, as well as in the handout, which is included in the resources module. So review that. The materials and procedure can be basically verbatim what the handout says. Of course, write it in the terms of a student and in your own words. So for example, on the um, handout, it might say, before each data collection, Ensure that you create the table that's referenced in example A in your composition notebook. Okay, that's irrelevant. The, <laughs> the people reading your study don't care that you made a table in your composition notebook. They want to know what were you recording. Um, that's what I mean by not student instructions, but researcher instructions. So that's what the change should be between uh, materials and procedure. Um, but they can be pretty much referenced right from that handout. So check the handout for that. The second two are just references and review. Ensure that you're providing references in text and at the end. Um, we're going to follow a different guideline so that you get used to being flexible. Um, you probably in your whole career used MLA and APA. Well, in the scientific community, <laughs> we are not that consistent. Uh, most journals have different expectations depending on what journal you're publishing to. So I'm going to, I'm going to set the expectation that your references in text and at the end follow the nature journals expectations um, or the journal of nature because that is one of the most prestigious um, scientific journals that you can be published in. So go to that website. It'll explain it's relatively straightforward, so don't stress it out um, about how to cite the sites. Um, real quick caveat, if you're using like Google Maps, because I assure you are, um, if you cite it very simple and short and sweet, Google Maps at maps.google.com, blank, that's fine. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can see that in the example as well. If you would like to request a review, a review my expectation is that you do request it by Thursday um, at 4. Actually, this says Thursday, February 11th at 5 p.m., but I've changed this to Wednesday um, at 4 p.m. So Wednesday, February 10th at 4 p.m. That's included in the schedule that you've gotten handed out. Now, the second piece that you're going to want to look at is make sure to post your group name to the Padlet. Don't post the assignment. I don't want other students to have access to your assignment. Post the edible link in the comments for the assignment and then I can access it. And the last piece is formatting and finalizing. And it follows the same sort of layout expectations of 2.6. The only thing that's different is there is no more appendix because I don't need 
that information. The second is you have a few more added places under your research plan that didn't exist prior. Um, so make sure to pay attention to that and check out the example um, to ensure that you followed those formatting guidelines to a T um, before you submit your final product as a PDF into the submission page. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that helped provide you with some detailed instructions of what is expected in terms of the introduction and research plan. If you have any questions, of course, please reach out. Also feel free to reference any of the videos from the 2.6 demonstration of understanding so that you're prepared. Thanks for tuning in.